Okay. All right, so I'm an extra help, and I'm reviewing some protein problems that people had. And uh, looking at a primary structure like this, the question is, well, where are the peptide bonds? And the question is, how do we get to a primary structure? So what's easiest to do is probably start from scratch. What is an amino acid? If you can visualize what an amino acid is, I think it's very easy to look at these structures. So let me just white out uh, some things here. And that's the important part, the important part here is to find what exactly is an amino acid. To make some space for myself, and here we go. All right, so an amino acid has two ends. It's got an amide end, where there's a nitrogen bonded to two H's, and it also has a carboxylic end. But be between that, there's this carbon that's very important, and there's this carboxyl carbon where it bonds to, double bonds to an oxygen and makes an OH. And this is important because we call this an amino acid for two reasons. And I'll draw this ah group here. So an amino acid by structure right, has two carbons and a mine ending. And the mine or amine ending has the two hydrogens. And this is a Ku group. And I could write this another way. Okay, I could write this as, um, a C O O H. I like to call it a Ku group. Then I got this carbon. It's bonded to an H. Again, I got that A. And then I've got this NH2 ending, if you want to write it like that. The bottom line is I've got two different parts of an amino acid. I've got an amine, or amine, I always say amine, but other people say amine. I have an amine ending, and I mean it. And then I have the Ku group ending, but this is really a carboxylic acid ending. Carboxylic acid ending, otherwise known as the Ku group. So these are the terminal ends. Now the important part is this carbon in the middle has the A group. That's what makes the amino acids different. Okay, and that's very important. If you can understand this to be the amino acids, okay, and knowing what the two groups are, the rest of this is going to fall in place, okay? Now, the reason why we call it an amino acid is because of the amine group and the acid group. In organic chemistry, we're going to look at this in more detail, but this is an acidic end. Vine vinegar, if you're West Ham, it's vinegar, okay? But in vinegar is essentially a Ku group ending. It's a weak acid ending. Citric acid, and this, an acid also has a Ku group ending. So we've got an acid ending or carboxylic acid, sometimes called a carbonyl group because of this, but always think carbon dull bonded to the O is one end, and then you have the N, the amine group at the end, or, all right? Now, once I establish and understand that's an amino acid, the amine group, okay, and the carboxylic group, what do I do from here? Well, well now to put these together, so I'm going to get rid of uh, this, just white it, Ooh, Christmas in July, I'm going to Get rid of this at some point. Does it go away? Okay, yeah, it does. All right, so I'm going to wipe this out. And it will be all white. All right. Someone's going to laugh at some point. All right, appreciate it. Now, I want to put this together. Now that I understand what an amino, uh, an amino acid is, I want to put the amino acid together to make this polypeptide. Now. I have to understand, I cannot put two carboxylic acids together. If I was to do this like this, now I could flip this over, another amino acid, and if I flipped it over, you would see the basically mirror image. And that's always possible. So you could put the carboxylic group at this end, okay? Then I've got that C that's got the A group, and then I've got the amine group at the end, NH2. Now, if you try to bond these right here and say, okay, take out the water, because I know it's a dehydration reaction, what would you get? Well, if what you would get, my friends in chemistry and biology, is that you would get a C, double bonded to an O, that's from right there, from right here. Then you would get an O to a C, double bonded to an O. So when we take the water out, take the two H's and O, we would get this, okay? And this is essentially called an ester. And that's not what we have 
in a peptide chain. There is no designation of an O in the middle. Okay, that's not a peptide bond. So that is incorrect. So you have to make sure that you bond the appropriate ends. So let's white it out again. Okay, as I said before. I'm going to now make sure I have the right end. So here comes another amino acid. Okay, another amino acid right here. Okay, this is the same one. I'm going to put the right group next to it. So I have the amine group here with the H. I've got the middle cabin. It's got the A group. And now I've got the CU ending or the carboxylic acid ending with the carbonyl group. And there's something on my thing here. Okay, so what am I going to take out? Take out the water. Okay, take out the water. Well, what's going to bond? The C double bonded to the O is going to bond to this N. This H will push down. So we can write that. So we'll have a C double bonded to the O, E to the Izzo. I'm not sure what that means. But this will bond to the N. This H will come down out of the way. And we're off and running. And my friends in chemistry, that is, for, that is what we call a peptide bond. We have just now linked one amino acid to another, but it only works from the Ku group ending to the amine ending. Take out the water and the trash. Don't talk back, yak be yak, all those songs don't apply here, so I'll continue on. So you have the end. And if you look carefully, you'll see in our polypeptide that, that bond right there, okay? So let's go find that bond. Where is it between the carbon double bond to the end? Here we go. These are all the peptide bonds. This is where one amino acid linked to another when the what came out? The ghosts? No, the water. Because when you put these together, you're making water. And what we call that reaction? Condensation or what? Dehydration. Either way, the water's coming out. But you should be able to see now where are my, where does one amino acid link to another? And I'm looking between the carbon double bonded to the end. And if you want to color code them, here is the first amino acid. Here is the next, including the A group. Here is the next. There's a smaller A group, and you can see what I'm doing here. All right? So there's where, if I rotate this down, that's where the R groups are. Okay, and these are essentially the same except for the attaching R groups on that middle carbon. So in my opinion, if you understand what an amino acid is supposed to look like before it bonds, and understand how it has to bond to give us something that doesn't have an oxygen in the middle, because that's what you'd get if it bonded the wrong way, then that's a peptide bond. And we can keep going here. Are we good with that? Natalie, okay. What else was getting us down with this? Now, what if I said to you, so these questions were, using amino acid chart, please write the amino acid <laughs> sequence. Well, now that you know how they're linked, all you do to your chart is look for the R groups. So the amino acid that has an R group with a benzene ring with an OH, okay, I have one here somewhere. We can name that, that guy. And then where is that benzene ring with the OH? And I'll find it. And there's the benzene ring. I think it was T-H-Y. Yeah, it probably was. Uh, yeah, it's over here. It was over here. I just don't know where my... Yeah, tyrosine. Okay, so this is the same kind of thing. So that's just matching. Now that you can figure out where the amino acids are, you can just look up on a chart. You'll always have this, okay, to identify like you did right in the activity. Okay. All right. Uh, write the names of the amino acids that have R groups that are hydrophobic. Hydrophobic means you're nonpolar. 
So look at the R groups. Look at what's attaching to the middle carbon. Okay, here I have a CH2OH. That's polar. That's going to like water. Water's polar. This is polar. It's going to like water. It's hydrophilic. This CH3 is what? Nonpolar. Nonpolar. Carbons and hydrogen are essentially the same, have the same electric activity, so that's hydrophobic. Okay? That's hydrophobic. This is a bunch of, even though they don't see C's and H's here, these are C's and H's, hydrophobic. So whatever the name of this amino acid is, you can, you can check by just the R group with a benzene, okay, with just no OH, you can clearly get that amino acid name. This is hydrophobic, also nonpolar. Next R group. No, there's a sulfur. That'd be for a disulfide bridge. Okay, that's polar. It's the same one as this one, so it's repetitive. This is what? If it's a negative. Rhymes with ionic, exactly. Ionic. ionic attraction, very good. And there's a disulfide. And then careful with this one. Okay? We have NCH2COOH. So what is the group here? What's the R group here if this middle carbon has a CH2 on it? And I'll write it up here. If that N group goes, C uh, H2 C O2 H and there's my N, it's my peptide bond. Okay. Well what is this really? This is the C O O H, right? This is the carboxylic ending. This is CH2, so there's an H here. There's my N. What's your R group? Just the H. Is an H polar? No, so that would also be hydrophobic. That one's, that one's easy to miss right there. Okay? Hopefully I didn't miss it on my key. So that's all that is there. Um, who forms disulfide bridges? That's the one that has the sulfur. Okay? You have to have the sulfur that gives the curl in our hair. Okay? Hop in our step. I don't know. Yodel in our... No, forget it. Sorry. Um, pot two. Where is the H bonding occurring? Okay, H bonding is going to occur in between atoms that have fun. We're having fun after school. What is fun? Fluorine, oxygen, nitrogen. These guys do what to the hydrogen? They pull electrons in so much they expose the proton. So when I'm doing this party, people and people want to go to the party. I'm looking for, ooh, there's a fun element. So that H is going to go look for something that's negative, another fun element. <laughs> this is another fun element, hydrogen, because it's bonded to an N. How about this H? Is this H having fun? No, no because carbon and hydrogen are about the same. So they're sharing electrons equally. So that's not going to undergo H bonding. Okay, but that H will for the same reasons. How about that H? No. no. That H, of course. That H? No. no. Okay, so you get it. Okay, that's, that's all there is to it. I mean, there's different combinations there. All right? Identify where other hydrogen bombs could occur by marking the structure. Number seven says, what is possible? Why is it possible hydrogen bonds to form between two elements in the secondary structure? This is a great question. The answer is very simple. The, the fawn elements are what? So very electronegative that they pull the electrons in the bonds toward them. So they what? Expose the proton. If I was an AP chem, I'd say we're making an electron deficient hydrogen. You need only three elements can pull electrons so far away to make this guy positive. Okay, for those that are waiting for me, chem-wise, I'm going to be with you in five minutes. You're piecing out? Yeah. All right. <laughs> I guess what's the opposite of that? Piecing in. No, piecing in or what? Not piece out. Terrorizing out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, in the secondary structure, the attractive forces occur from, believe it or not, in a secondary structure, they occur between the backbone not between the R groups, all right? 
that was just a side thing. You don't have to get crazy with that or, or get jiggy with it. Okay. Now, tertiary structures, what we made in class. Label of types of bonds or attractions that are keeping figure three together using the labels. Well, we should know this. Nonpolar, nonpolar, so that's the what? Hydrogen, I'm sorry, the uh, hydrophobic interactions, okay? Positive, neg negative, rhymes with ionic, exactly. Excellent, you guys are good rappers. Ooh, an H having fun. Hydrogen, Hydrogen bonding, okay, and of course the two sulfurs making a bridge, and there's dot, two of them die. I don't know what that would call it. <laughs> die sulfide bridge. Okay. All right, now moving on. Okay, describe the polypeptide that participates in this reaction. Describe part of the polypeptide. So what they're saying, I can't say very very well. The part that's causing these interactions are the what groups of the amino acid? The A groups. All of these come from the R groups. So in a tertiary structure like the ones we made. Okay, it's the, it's the attraction between the R groups. Who cares about that question? How many polypeptide chains? There's three of them. Let's make it quaternary. And this is what got people down. What bonds and interactions hold a quaternary structure together? Two sulfurs making a bridge, and there's two of them disulfide. Ooh, hydrophobic interactions, and then positive negative rhymes with ionic. Uh, ionic, thank you for saying it so loud. Okay, now. Draw all the products in the dehydration reaction. So this is exactly what I'm talking about. I may give you hint, hint, wink, double wink. Okay, weird thing after that. Okay, I may give you a bunch of amino acids and make the polypeptide. How do I do that? The Ku group reacts the Ku group with the other side. No, the Ku group reacts with the a mine group. What comes out? The water. the water. Push it together, what are you going to get? C bonded to an H, right? All right, so if I was to quickly do this, and I will because I am tall, let's do it. So serine. Okay, here I go. Here I go again. So I take my what? H2. Bonded to the C. I'm just going to put the R group for here. Okay, this, I'm going to take out the what? The trash later, but I'm also going to take out the water. So I take out an O and H and an H here. This C is going to double bond to the O. This is going to go to the N. This loses an H, and now it's just an H. And here's my peptide bond, boys and girls. C, here's my R. That's this part right here. There's an H. And then I have another peptide. What am I going to lose? Yes, you can say it loud and proud. Water. Yeah, 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 okay. Mm. So, C double bonds to the O. So what's left is a CO, but that's double bonded. That's bonds to the N, who lost an H. There's one H left. Now we're over here. There's a C with an A group. I don't care, we can draw that in any time you like. Then, it bonds to another Ku group. But what's gonna happen over here? What comes out? Water. Water. Water, yes, we're getting, we're doing it faintly now. Okay, C, O is really, oh, I forgot this. There's a CH here. Oh, Christmas and July. I messed up. There's my carbon. It double bonds to the O. That's this right here. Then it's single bonds to the N. It makes another peptide bond. The, a, the N loses an H. I've got the C. Here's my R group. Don't care what it is at this point. And my ending terminal is COOH. Very important when you write your protein. The ending group is a Ku, or the beginning group is an amine. Okay? I, and of course, I'm not done. If I asked you to do this on a test, you'd get this wrong because you did include what? What came out? Three water molecules. Because you made how many peptide bonds? Three. Three. Don't forget. These guys stick at the end. This is called dehydration, taking the water out, condensation. And if you go to reverse, split water up and put it back to the both sides, we call that hydrolysis. That's the entire worksheet. What else is getting you down about that? If you can do the entire worksheet, you understand what I need you to understand for tomorrow's test. Which, to make it more challenging, because I thought this pretty easily, I'm going to do it all in German. <laughs> all right?
But I'll give you the little books so you can look it up, okay? <laughs> Is there any question about the protein stuff? That's it. If you get this, okay, you'll get it in German tomorrow. All right? All right, that's it. All right. Thanks, Mr. Ross. Yeah, you can, can I press stop. it? Yeah.